Hello and thank you for choosing to buy an Alec Buckingham 20, 24 or 30H mower with the Honda engine. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to prepare it out of the box and get ready for mowing. Before you start though, uh, when the parcel is delivered, uh, please make sure that there is no obvious damage to the outside of the carton. If there is, you may want to just have a check inside just to see if there is any damage, um, but please don't sign for a product that you're not certain has arrived in good condition. You will need some help uh, with lifting and moving this product. So the 20 inch machine weighs 103 kilograms, the 24 inch weighs 111 kilograms, and the 30 inch model weighs 135 kilograms. So you are going to need some help to move this um, mower and the carton itself. So when the packaging arrives, it is mostly cardboard and most of the weight is made up of the cardboard and the pallet itself. Okay, so let's see what's inside the box. So now we've unsecured the mower from the pallet, uh, just best to get some assistance just to help you lift the, uh, the mower off. Try that back. And then release the parking brake. Lower the front roller down. Okay. Please also save the carton and all the packaging for 14 days. Uh, store this in a dry place. Uh, just in case that the worst happens and you're not happy with the product or if there is something wrong with it, uh, if we need to organise collection of this product it is better and uh, that you have the original packaging uh, for it to be returned. So now we're just going to check the, the contents of the box. Uh, so you should have your 20, 24 or 30 inch mower. You'll also have your grass box. Uh, note that the grass box cradle will be fitted to the actual um, mower itself. You will also get a literature pack. So in that pack you will have your, your manual, you will also have the actual engine manual itself, you will have a set of spanners which is for the imperial and metric fasteners, you will also have a, a drain fuel assembly and the warranty card as well to register the mower. You will also get a quick start guide which will have a QR code which will refer you back to this video. So when you are looking at setting up the, uh, the mower at a later date, uh, you can refer back to that video. Uh, the video is quite long and there are lots of different sections, but if you refer down below the video, here you will see uh, descriptions and timelines uh, for each section of the video, just to make it easier for you to find the reference point at a later date. Um, please also go to our website and register your product for warranty on there uh, if you don't want to use the, uh, the postal option which is available. On the side of the, uh, the mower you will find a silver serial decal plate uh, which has your serial reference number on which you will, you will need uh, for when you are registering the product. So the handlebars are already attached to the mower so there's no assembly for you to do there but you have got the option to alter the top height uh, which is for operator comfort. So we can do that by releasing the locking mechanism on the midsection that then gives, gives you the option to raise and lower the top handle depending on your comfort. Once you've got that set, just lock in the clamp, lock that into position and then you're good to, good to mow. So now we've set the handlebars on the mower, we'll now uh, check that the engine is ready to run. So this mower is supplied without any fuel, uh, but it will be supplied with oil. So these engines are pre-run. Uh, during production, so it will uh, have oil already um, pre-filled. Uh, it is advisable that you do check though before actually running uh, the machine. It is quite dangerous to the engine to run that uh, without any oil uh, or with it uh, overfilled as well. So we'll just uh, check the levels. So we do that by removing the dipstick on the front of the engine. So if we unscrew that, just remove the excess oil on that and then reinstate. And then we just remove again just to check the oil level. Okay, so please refer to the manual as well for the, uh, the levels uh, for your oil. So 
So at this point I'm also going to mention that you'll be changing all of the engine oil in the engine after about 20 hours of work and then thereafter you will change the oil every 50 hours or at the end of each season before storage, whichever is sooner. So to change the oil and drain it through the drain plug which is accessed to the rear of the engine you will also be using the fill assembly so you remove the plug and then insert and screw the assembly position a capture tray just to capture all the uh, oil that's drained and then once you tilt the machine back it will rest in that position and then you can drain the engine from there. Once that has all been drained you can then reinstate the plug and then get ready to fill the engine and back up with oil. So we use an SAE 10W30 which is recommended for these engines and you will need approximately 600 millilitres of oil. So that's around about this much uh, of a litre container. You can either use a funnel uh, or with, uh, with this container it does have a fill assembly just to help you um, with the topping up. And again that's filled from the front of the mower through the front dipstick. Again once that's removed position the mower tilt it back and then you can fill quite easily from that position. It's very important as well not to overfill the engine uh, also, that will cause you uh, is issues once uh, once start up. So the fuel also needs to go into the fuel tank. Uh, we don't transport the machines with fuel uh, as it is too dangerous. So you need to remove the petrol filler cap, uh, add unleaded petrol, and the capacity is 3.1 litres. Uh, the fuel that you will be using will be a standard unleaded fuel of 86 octane rating or higher. Uh, so replace the petrol filler cap uh, securely once that's, uh, that's been done. Uh, wipe any excess or spilt uh, fuel from the mower. Please remember that the fuel is highly flammable. Uh, make sure that you store and transport it safely. Uh, when the engine is hot as well after you have been using it uh, and you need to uh, top up with fuel please make sure that the engine is cool um, before you uh, start filling up as this could uh, cause the fuel to ignite. The biggest uh, and most common problem that we have with lawnmowers is really to do with the fuel. Uh, that it be difficulty starting uh, or difficult for the engine to run running at a consistent speed and that's nearly always down to a fuel problem so it is really important to keep your fuel clean and to keep it in a container that is not metal painted uh, where the metal paint may flake um, or rust uh, which then uh, will affect the, um, the life of the fuel. Uh, so what we recommend to use is a, a fuel stabiliser uh, and there are several different uh, stabilisers on the market uh, but that will certainly keep the fuel fresher for longer. Officially fuel goes stale within 30 days of purchase uh, and the fuel stabiliser will keep the fuel uh, remain more stable and therefore give you less starting and running problems. Uh, the other alternative uh, is to buy a specialist fuel uh, which has all sort of additives uh, already in it. Quite, it's quite expensive uh, but you're not using uh, much fuel with, uh, with these mowers so uh, it is something that is uh, advised. Uh, the fuel is called Aspen, uh, that's A-S-P-E-N uh, and we do recommend the use of Aspen uh, in the fuel tank. It will stay uh, fresher for longer and it's much less likely to settle uh, and cause problems uh, in the float chamber. So now we're going to fit the grass box and the cradle uh, is already fitted to the mower and it does have two positions so it was, has one for storage and then one for work. You'll notice that it rests against uh, two buffers on the lower part of the mower. The grass box it does have a recess uh, under the label and uh, just for, uh, for grip for when uh, emptying. You'll notice that there is a uh, recess um, locator on the the underside uh, on the moulding when that sits under the grass box cradle and then rest the sits against the, uh, the front of the mower. It is easy to get that wrong so if you don't uh, locate that correctly you can still rest it on the bar but you won't get the proper fill and the grass box is also loose and can jump out once you start the machine. So you just need to tilt that down, locate that correctly so the bar actually sits inside the moulding underneath 
and then that's in, set in the correct position. So now the fuel and oil are in the engine, we can then do the startup procedure. So we do this by putting the ignition switch to the on position. We can then move the throttle towards the hair position. We then open up the fuel stop tap, put that towards the on position, and then we bring the choke towards the operator. We can then pull the pull coil. This will then start the engine. And do not pull the coil and then release it once the engine is running, as this will cause damage to the actual mechanism itself. And once the engine is ticking over, we can then move the choke then towards the off position. I can then turn the engine off by again just putting the ignition switch to the off position and that will kill the engine. Please also remember that the fumes that an internal combustion engine gives off are poisonous with carbon monoxide and high levels of particulate matter 2.5. So do not run an engine inside a garage or inside a building um, and start the machine only outside and take care not to breathe in any of the discharge from the muffler. So the muffler does have a uh, warning decal on uh, for temperature. Uh, so when, this is, uh, when the engine is running, that will be very hot. Uh, there is an element of protection there, um, but please be sure that you don't touch that uh, or spill fuel on it at all when, uh, when topping up with fuel. And also be mindful of any children that are around uh, the machine, either during or after the operation, as that will continue to be hot for some time once the mower is switched off. So the controls to drive the mower are at the back of the machine. Uh, so most importantly we have the red safety lever which we engage forward and that's basically an operator presence. We then bring in the bail bar and this will engage the drive or the cylinder. We also have options to control the roller without the cylinder engaged for when transporting. So we pull the lever onto the notch that will disengage the cylinder for when we are transporting. When you want to engage the cylinder for cutting release the lever from the notch and then that will engage your cylinder. So it's press the red lever to engage and then bring in the bail bar and that will operate the drive system. Once you're ready to stop just release the bail bar and that will cut the drive from operating. The th engine throttle uh, for your uh, drive speed is also easily accessible uh, at the handlebar position and you also have easy access to the parking brake uh, for the rear roller for transport or for when parking uh, the machine on a slope. So to change the height of cut uh, of the Buckinghams uh, we need to tilt the machine back and then using the plunger at the front if we pull the plunger that will release the, uh, the kickstand leg that will then raise the front section uh, off the ground just to release the tension then using the spanner provided, we want the 13 mil, and we can slacken the two fixings at the front, which lock the mechanism. Then using the hand, hand wheel at the side, we can then rotate that, which will raise and lower the front roller. Height of cut on this mower is 5 mil to 35 millimeters. And that's the height range you can mow between. Once you've got that set, you can then lock those locking bolts off. You can then tilt the machine back, pull the plunger and just release that. Locking that back into position, allowing you to just lower the machine. So it's really important that there is a rule where you only mow uh, one third of the grass height at any one time. So just to put that in perspective, uh, so 30 millimetres, if that's your grass height, uh, you don't want to be mowing any lower than 20 millimetres. Uh, so basically measure the height of grass and then you want to be taking a third of that off at any one time. If you want to be taking your grass height down lower than a third, uh, then we do recommend that you mow more regularly in order to be able to take down the height of cut uh, of your grass. So, recommend about two to three times a week for good quality uh, for lawn conditions. One of the really nice features uh, on this Buckingham mower is that there is a front rake uh, that sits between the cylinder and the front roller. Uh, so this rake will lift uh, lateral grasses uh, lying flat in your lawn that your cylinder would normally uh, otherwise miss. So in order for this rake to work effectively it needs to be set at the correct 
depth depending on what height of uh, grass you are cutting. Uh, so my advice uh, firstly would be to leave the, the rake in the highest position um, as you've taken it out of the carton and as you get used to the machine uh, you can then start to lower the rake just to give you some really nice results on your lawn. Uh, so to just adjust the rake uh, we need to slacken the two locking nuts uh, on the front uh, rake carrier. This will then allow the rake assembly to drop and lower and basically we want to set that just above uh, the surface uh, of the ground. So we don't want to set that too deep uh, else we will start to be damaging uh, the spring tines. And then while holding that at the correct height we can then adjust the, uh, the fitting nuts just to secure that into the correct position. So before you start mowing, it's always a good idea just to check that the cylinder and bottom blade are correctly adjusted. These are preset in the factory, but during transport uh, there is the potential that these could move, um, taking them off cut. So we check this by tilting the machine back and then just using a standard piece of writing paper, uh, tear that into about an inch width strip and then just fold that over. Uh, on these uh, Buckingham mowers we have a fixed cylinder which is in between two bearings and we then have a bottom blade uh, which we then raise and lower to meet the cylinder uh, depending on what contact we're trying to achieve. So the cylinder and the bottom blade act as a pair of scissors uh, so that's basically the cutting action we are after. So we want the cylinder to just lightly brush over the bottom blade just creating that light scissor cut action. So to adjust the bottom blade we have two adjusters on each side of the machine and basically these are acting against a pivot system which then activate the bottom blade assembly to raise or lower against the, the cylinder. So the top adjuster we want to slacken but first we'll just, just check the cut so we are just, just basically folding the paper over so if we were to cut with this action it will basically be tearing the blades of grass which would be, uh, which would be damaging to the, the plant itself. So we want to bring the cylinder closer, to the bottom blade closer to the cylinder. So we slacken the top adjusters about a quarter of a turn and then we do the same then with the bottom. So we take the, the top one off quarter of a turn and then bring the bottom adjuster on quarter of a turn. And then we just check again. So we're just cutting paper but we're slightly too tight so we'll just slacken that off slightly. So we'll just come off on the bottom one and then on on the top one. Take the other side off. So we're getting a nice clean cut on there and you want to check that all the way along. So we're getting a nice clean scissor cut action, you can see there's no tears to the edge of the paper and that's basically the, the contact we are after, so just, you can just hear the, the cylinder lightly brushing over the bottom blade and you're getting a nice clean, clean cut as well. So if we're cutting paper then we will be cutting grass cleanly as well. You also have the option with the Buckingham to adjust the deflector plate. Um, this deflector plate will basically adjust how the grass is thrown from the cylinder into the grass box. You may need to adjust this depending on your conditions which may change throughout different times of the year. So we can achieve this by using the 916 spanner provided. If we slacken the two fixings on the front of the deflector. And then just pushing down evenly on the uh, deflector plate we can then raise or lower this just to get the required results that we're after. Once we've set that or adjusted that to suit we then just lock those fixings back up. You can use these slots and also the top level just as a gauge just to make sure that that is even. So once you've set the deflector just rotate the cylinder by hand just making sure that the cylinder is not in contact with the deflector plate now you've made the adjustment.
Often when you receive a new lawnmower, you're in the situation where your grass is quite long. I don't think that's uh, unusual, and a cylinder mower is not great at mowing long grass shorter. What it does best is mow short grass even shorter. Uh, one of the reasons why it doesn't mow uh, it so well is that the front roller lays the grass over before getting through to the, the cylinder. So if you've got long grass and your machine's set to short, basically that long grass does not stand up in time to meet the cylinder. So you're in a situation where you are missing um, long blades of grass and that will show up visibly on the appearance afterwards. So what is available for the Buckingham uh, is a uh, side front roller kit, uh, which is a very simple kit uh, to fit and you can find details of this uh, on our website. So when you have finished mowing and you are putting uh, the machine away, it is re recommended that you clean it down using a light hand brush or, or you can even use a leaf blower just to remove any light debris. Uh, spraying it down with uh, high pressure water is actually asking for problems uh, because you're blowing um, high pressured water into places where it really shouldn't go. Um, so remove any uh, grass debris, especially around the engine cooling fins and the filters and check that the uh, cutting action as well. Um, you can also apply some uh, light cutting oil um, just to the edge of the cylinders just to protect the actual cutting edge itself. A uh, regular basis as well you also want to be checking uh, that all the nuts and bolts are securely tightened uh, and ahead of uh, the winter storage for the machine you want to drain any fuel that's in the petrol tank and you can do this by removing the, uh, the pipe from the carburetor uh, remove any excess fuel from the tank and then just run the fuel, the engine, uh, for a few minutes just until the engine stops and all uh, fuel has been depleted from the mower. Um, you can also uh, remove the carburetor itself uh, by removing the bowl uh, at the, uh, the rear of the engine. Uh, details of this are in the, um, the machine manual as well, just to how to access that. Uh, and then you can clean the, the bowl itself and remove any fuel and that will uh, prevent the fuel from uh, leaving any deposits or forming around the carburetor parts themselves. Uh, another hint uh, or tip is just to coat the, uh, any metal exposed edges uh, on the cutting cylinder and the blade just with a, a light WD-40 uh, oil. Um, the need for lubrication on this mower is minimal as all moving parts are, uh, have seal bearings. Uh, the few lubrication points require a few drops of engine oil uh, just every two months and that's for the drive chains. And you can see the, um, the excess points for these just on the drive cover, um, which is just a, a light oil for the chains. So to keep your mower uh, in great condition, uh, or more importantly your lawn, uh, it's really important just to keep the blades sharp. So we recommend that you have your blades uh, sharpened annually uh, at your local service dealer um, who has the facility to be able to grind your cylinders and also your bottom blades. Uh, your mower should be going in for a service with your local dealer anyway. So just going to talk about safety now. So uh, the blades uh, on the cylinder uh, and also the bottom blade as well are very sharp even when they are not rotating quickly. So uh, it is important uh, that to wear gloves uh, when you are adjusting the cylinder or a setting um, and if you are changing the height of cut or the cylinder as well or making any adjustments to the machine at all, it is important just to make sure that the, um, the engine is isolated um, just for your own safety. Um, so when uh, you are operating the machine as well, just important just to keep any bystanders uh, at two metres at bay, especially children as well or pets as well, keep them clear of the machine. We have a lot of resources, uh, over 150 videos on our YouTube sites and this is a great resource on how to make a better lawn and also how to get the most out of your Alip product. Uh, we really hope that this video has helped to prepare you for the arrival of your new mower and that you have many years of trouble free life out of this. Um, we also have uh, our social media platforms and we look forward to hearing about your amazing lawn uh, on our social media sites. Thank you.